What we're going to set up today is going to make you edit 10 times faster. And I know you may be thinking, Dylan, that's probably all hype. I promise you it is not. These keyboard shortcuts that I have set up on my Final Cut have made me infinitely faster as an editor, and I know it can do the same for you. So pull up Final Cut and press the keyboard shortcut Option Command K. This brings up your keyboard command editor. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change some keys to keys that make it even faster to edit. So likely if you haven't messed around with this, you're still on default. I have my own custom one. We're gonna make essentially the same thing as this custom one. So if you have default, hit duplicate. And then for this example, we'll just do, we'll do example. So one of the first keyboard shortcuts we're gonna set up is very useful if you shoot in slow motion often. So if you shoot in higher frame rates and you're working on a 24 or 25 um, FPS timeline and you need to slow down that footage so it looks like slow motion. For example, this shot was either 60 FPS or 120 FPS. Uh, what you would do normally is select your clip, go to the retime button here, and then you would hit automatic speed. And then you have your slow motion shot. But for me, that's way too many steps, especially when I have tons of clips that are slow motion. So let's press Option Command K again in this top right search bar. Let's type in automatic speed. And what I have this changed to is Option Forward Slash. And then all you'll do here is hit Save. So now the next time you have clips or multiple clips that you need to adjust or change to be slow motion, you would just press option forward slash and you have it all set up. So if you need to write that down, if you followed along, but if not, let's move on to the next one. So option command K, this is probably one of the most useful aside from another one that we're gonna go over and that is changing your blade tool. So if we pull up blade, so normally to make an instant cut, it's command B, right? So if you wanna make a cut here, you press command B and it makes a cut, command B and it makes a cut. I'll press Command Z to undo. You can also click this and just hit delete to mend those cuts. If you want to bring up your blade tool, you of course plus press B and then you can go in and make specific cuts. But for me, I wanna make an automatic cut just by pressing one key. It only makes sense. You take out the having to look down and press Command and then B. So what you'll do is press Option Command K, type in blade, You'll go to your blade tool and switch this to command B and then go to blade and hit B and then reassign. So basically you made um, anytime you want a blade, you just hit the B key. Anytime you want to bring up the blade tool, you hit command B. So we'll hit save, we'll close out of this. So now when I press B, it makes cuts. It's just one key. It's really quick, it just makes sense. Uh, and you save a lot of time compared to having to press Command and B, which is kind of weird. You gotta look down to find Command. It just is so much easier when your hand's normally on the, the space bar or somewhere close to it. The next one, which also has to do with trimming, let's press Option Command K. We'll type in Trim. So you have Trim End and Trim Start. Normally this is Option Left and Option Right Bracket. So if, for example, I want the clip to start here, I would press option left bracket. If I want it to end here, I press option right bracket and it trims everything to either the right or the left of where the uh, playhead is. That's once again, too many keys and you can really expedite the process by changing this to the G and H key. So let's do trim, hit trim end and hit G, oh, sorry, change that. So trim start, you're gonna hit G and reassign. And then you can just delete this or you can keep it if you think you'll use that again. So it doesn't really matter. You can use both and then trim end H, reassign. So now usually your hands are sitting dead center on your computer keyboard. And so all you have to do here is just hit G and H, which is right next, next to each other. And you just have simple trims. It just makes it so much easier to make adjustments. It's one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts. And this actually was suggested to me by a subscriber because initially I had it as just left and right bracket, but I found that I would have to look to find the left bracket and the right bracket. But with G and H, 
You don't even have to look that much. You know it's dead center on the keyboard. Okay, press Option Command K. The next one we're gonna do is, has to do with volume. So you have lower one decibel and raise one decibel. Normally that is control minus and control plus. So you'd select your clip, press control minus, it lowers one decibel. Maybe if I click on this, you can see it. I hate how if you press control minus, you have to go off and on and then it readjusts and shows you what decibel level your volume is at. But it's once again, too many keys and you gotta look down at the keyboard to hit control minus and then control plus as well. So what I have done is just made it plus and minus. So if we type in volume, we go to lower volume one decibel, just hit the minus key, reassign, go to raise volume, go to plus key, reassign. And if you want, you can delete these and you can also reassign them to different keys. It doesn't necessarily matter. And then you could go ahead and delete these two. I'm not sure why there are two there. So now all you have to do is press minus, 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 plus, 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 minus, 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 and you're lowering and raising by one decibel. Once again, it just makes things so much easier so fast and it's intuitive. The next keyboard shortcut I talked about in a recent video and it also helps with speeding up the trimming process. So if you press R to bring up your range tool, let's say you wanna start the clip here and end about here. So you want everything in this yellow box. You can trim everything outside of the yellow box by pressing option and backslash. And that trims everything to the right and the left immediately. But once again, you're having to press two buttons. You have to look down to find both keys. And so if we press Option Command K, we'll type in trim in the top right and trim to selection. Just make this the backslash key and hit reassign. And then if you want, you could delete that up to you. Hit save. And so now when you make your selection, you just hit the backslash key and um, it trims off everything to the right and left of the range selection. The next thing we're gonna change is a function that allows you to play a few seconds before and a few seconds after the playhead. So for example, if you press shift question mark, it'll start the footage a few seconds before, go a few seconds after, and then cut back to the beginning. Now, because I have a repeat or loop playback turned on, it will continue to do that. But if I was to turn this off by pressing Command L, and you'll notice that that arrow goes away. Now when I press Shift question mark, it plays a few seconds before, a few seconds after, and then snaps back and pauses. So if you need to make adjustments, you can then make adjustments. But I find that I don't wanna press two keys. It, I want to minimize as much time as possible while editing. And so I have changed that to just the question mark key. So I believe it's play around, it is play around. So um, we'll change this, we'll hit just question mark, reassign. Once again, you can delete these if you want. So now when you hit save and close out and press the question mark button, it'll do that function. This is one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts for audio editing. And I highly suggest setting this up so let's say, let's say this is your music track, which this is a music track, and you just wanna listen to the ambient sound effects or whatever sound effects you have set up. You don't wanna have to hear the music as well. Usually what you would do is select those two, go over to this and press um, this key right here, solo selected items, or you press the shortcut option S which is essentially going to have this be the only thing that plays out. So even if this is on, it's only gonna play out what you have selected. Press Option S again. And what I have done, which I think this is just very intuitive, is if we press Option Command K and type in solo, we go to uh, right here, Option S, and we change this just to the C key and reassign. And then if you want it, you could delete this or change it. And the reason why I think this is intuitive, so right now I'll press C, is because to do the opposite, to disable these, is right is the key right next to it, is V, which is enable and disable a clip. So you have solo, which is C, and then right next to that key, 
you have V, which is disable. So it just makes sense to me. They're right next to each other. And once again, one key, so it really speeds up your workflow. The last one I'm gonna go over, at least the, the last one that I remember, is applying an automatic audio fade. So normally you would select two clips and then you would press option T. And as you can see, that now made this little crossfade in here. But once again, that's too many keys. You gotta look down and press option. So what I have done is made that Y. So if we type in crossfade right here, we select this and just hit the Y key and hit reassign. You can keep that. Once again, it doesn't really matter. Um, we'll hit save and close. So now all you have to do, select and just hit one key, which is in the center of the keyboard. And now you have an automatic crossfade applies applied. So it just, uh, it is a smoother audio transition. Now this is terrible audio, but <laughs> you get the point. It definitely helps out. And hopefully all of these help out. I know that remembering them is the hard part. So I actually have a free FCP cheat cheat sheet that I will link in the description, but um, I'm not sure that I have covered all of those tweaks that we just went over. So if I were you, I would write down what you just changed, maybe put it on a sticky note by your computer, and that way you can look down while editing and get everything ingrained in your memory. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.